morning, everyone. Um, so my name is uh, Abdul Rahman al -Atebi. You can call me Abdul for short. Um, so today I'll talk about uh, federated learning on OPAL. Um, so the issue that I'm trying to help solving is uh, data sharing. Uh, we all know data sharing is hard, even though uh, we can protect it using lawyers, you can protect it using smart people and like differential privacy and other uh, algorithms. Um, we're all familiar with Netflix case back in 2010 when Netflix uh, ran a competition uh, to improve their um, recommender system. So what they did, they hired smart people to anonymize their data and they opened their um, anonymized data to um, a set of scientists and they asked them to build a machine learning model uh, to predict uh, which, which movie you're gonna um, like next. Um, so a group of researchers in, in Texas, um, uh, I think UT Texas and Austin, uh, what they did, they got the data from Netflix and then they found a publicly available data set for movies, IMDB, and then they matched both um, data sets and they were able to de-anonymize people and find people by name. Uh, so even though Netflix spent a lot of money trying to protect their users, um, some of the users would basically watch a, a movie on Netflix and then review it on IMDB and then they basically revealed their true identity. Uh, so we can see that happening uh, across the board. Um, so also, uh, there's data leakage, we're all familiar with the hack that happened to Equifax. Um, and also, even if you have the best terms of uh, service written, you can get also something that you didn't calculate or you didn't account for, uh, which basically Cambridge Analytica and Facebook case, uh, where they were able to get all the data and then target people during the elections. Um, so. We know that data sharing is hard. You need constant monitoring. There's um, always a risk of data leakage. Uh, it's also expensive to store data, to move data, to do anything with the data. Legal um, uh, aspect of it because GDPR and other, uh, other legal laws that's coming up uh, on um, annual basis and also HIPAA. Um, so, we came with uh, we came up with an alg uh, with a standard called OPAL or Open Algorithms, um, and what we're trying to do with that is basically streamline the data sharing part. We want a clear process for people to share data and also get benefits from the data. Um, so we have vetted algorithms inside the ecosystem. Um, we have schema validation for the data that you can uh, share, and we also have a blockchain and. It could be public or private. And the blockchain here is just for monitoring purposes. So everything is monitored. Every access that you do, every computation that you do on Opal is supposed to be uh, uh, written and monitored. Um, so this is um, just a, a rough uh, um, schema of like what Opal actually looks like. So we have data providers, uh, and this could be anybody with uh, a piece of data uh, that they want to share. And then we have algorithm providers, and then there's like the query issuers. So we have a separation between the algorithm providers and the people who wants to run the computation or wants to get the answer. And then we have a blockchain. Uh, so we have a couple of data providers here, and then there's actually a process where you can submit a, an algorithm and ask people to vet it or ask uh, the company to vet it and then say, yeah, this is actually safe and it's secure. Uh, we can actually run it on that data and the schema actually matches uh, the data that we uh, contributed. And then the query providers or the query issuers is basically uh, the people who wants to run the computation and their job for them for that is basically they match um, a piece of algorithm with one data provider or multiple data uh, providers. And then you get the answers uh, back. Uh, so with Opal, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the demo, uh, you can do this uh, basically, which is, uh, this is Istanbul, um, and then we got uh, about nine million um, 
transaction, about, no, actually, about 10 million uh, transactions uh, from credit cards. And um, we basically tried to map um, the city of Istanbul. Um, and you can do that uh, with Opal. Um, this is what Opal offers. Uh, but as you saw in that demo is like, uh, there's limitations in Opal, uh, the current architecture, which basically it only gives you aggregate answers. It's useful, like if you want to com com compute the average or summation over like columns, it's it's good. It gives you just the number. Um, but the issue with that, you cannot train a machine learning model with just one instance of the data, uh, because the the way Opal uh, structures um, the data or gives you answers is it just gives you one answer so um, it doesn't try to give you access to the data it only gives you the answer back um, so um, so you can't build a machine learning model or train a machine learning model using that um, so that's why um, there is another um, aspect which there is none of the uh, algorithm that we can use, which is called federated learning, and it's basically it's a subset of transfer learning where you can combine learning from small machine machine learning models uh, to build one uh, generalized model. And the benefit of it is like you can split the split the machine learning models into multiple um, data centers or multiple servers, and then you run them uh, to train on the data set, and then you aggregate all the hyperparameters, which are the weights, the, the weights from the model, and then you can build a machine learning model. So that's a parallel uh, machine learning, and it's basically safe because when you, when you create a machine learning model, it's really hard um, to gener ge generate the same machine learning without having access to the data set. Um, but there's also trade-offs from uh, my uh, research, uh, what I did with federated learning, because the more agents you have, the more data sets or different data set buckets that you have, uh, the, there will be a decrease on accuracy. Um, but it's also, it, if you have four different data sets and you're combining the learning, it's actually uh, a good accuracy that you can uh, achieve. And uh, zero means like it's you trained on the entire data set. Um, so, so combining both federated learning and Opal, you can build basic machine learning models and you can basically um, have access to a lot of data sets. Um, uh, this looked like, oh, what is it? Distributed it ends up being worse. But actually, as you saw from the last talk, what using subsets of data does is it allows you to explore different parts of the parameter space. It's like adding noise to your parameter estimation. And if you harvest that correctly by having your network in aggregation correctly, you actually end up with more efficient learning and better, more accurate learning than if you did it all in parallel. So it's a, it's a sort of nerdy computer science point, but, but it has enormous sort of cost implications. Anyway. Why do you have to accuracy? Um, because uh, the more buckets you have, actually because of the data set that I use. I used here MNIST data set, which is the handwriting. Uh, so uh, the more agents you have, the less data that you're gonna be trained on. So. Um, so that's why there is a decrease in accuracy. Uh, and also the, the network that I used here, it's basically the network that Deval shows where all the uh, agents are connected uh, to everybody. So everybody actually talks to everybody. Uh, I haven't implemented the um, small word and uh, Dash and Rainy uh, network, but I'll try to do that uh, later. Um, so, uh, federated learning on Opal, uh, it's basically, uh, you have access to new data sets and you basically will be um, um, trusted. Uh, so, we also check your code before you run it. Uh, so, these are the possible projects that you can do. Um, so, uh, you can do customer behavior. Uh, so, think of like every shop has like an Opal instance. Um, and so you can um, build um, a machine learning model that actually learns locally f 
from different uh, customers, and then you can categorize people uh, and have these small communities uh, or small buckets of people that have the share, shared interest in the same uh, shop, or they have the same um, um, uh, behavior in, in shopping. And then you can say, these are the, the wealthy group, these are the middle class pe people, and these are the, um, the poor uh, people as well. Essentially, you can do the sort of thing that Jan was showing at the beginning, where you stratify your population to get much better sense of what their utility function is. Right? Okay, so go ahead. Um, yeah, so, and using that, you can also abstract it uh, to the next level, which basically gives you the social bridges, which is basically people who are, um, they go outside of their network and outside of their community and communicate with the uh, rest of the population. Um, and similarly, you can do that uh, with the same methods. Uh, and you can also do uh, estimate the GDP uh, using that as well. Uh, but you can use uh, the same method because you have access uh, to data. You can calculate and estimate uh, churn uh, uh, using different um, models. And with that is, that's it.